Today we're going to talk about a 4G GPS tracker for your motorcycle. And it's just a little bit bigger than a cigarette lighter. Did I mention it's 4G? Let's get to the garage. Hey everybody, I'm Cruise Man, and today we're going to talk about this 4G cellular GPS tracker from Invoxia. And I think you're going to be kind of excited about what this little thing can do. But before we get started, I just want to remind you, if you like product review videos, motorcycle videos, moto vlogs, reviews, test videos, tips and tricks, things like that, you're in the right place. So please take a second to click that subscribe button down below and don't forget to click the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you want to know when we come out with new videos. So. Today, we're talking about this Invoxia 4G GPS cellular tracker. First of all, I want to let you know that this video is not sponsored by Invoxia. They did not pay me to make this video. However, they did send me this to test and review. So I want to thank Invoxia for sending me this. And when I first got this in, I opened up the box I was kind of shocked at how small this thing is, how lightweight. I mean, it's all, almost nothing to it. How could this thing work? So let's just take a look at this tracker all the way around and kind of, you know, what's it made up of? First of all, I'm not exactly sure what the purpose is for this little, looks like a leather strap. I'm not really sure what you do with this. I guess you could put it on your hand. It's almost not big enough to fit around your hand. So I'm not, not really sure what this is for. Maybe you stick it on a, on a golf bag or something. I don't know. I probably would end up cutting that off uh, before I mount this permanently or semi-permanently. Uh, you've got their little logo on here. It has a micro USB charging port on one end, which means it's not waterproof. Unlike the Monimoto, hang on, where I that I reviewed, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, the Monimoto is waterproof. And the difference is it uses an internal battery. Whereas, and I think it lasts, what, a year, two years, something like that. Whereas the Invoxia is a rechargeable device. Now, they do make these little rubber plugs that you can buy on Amazon that would uh, possibly make that a little more waterproof. I don't know. I'd want it to go underwater. But I think the rest of it looks pretty sealed. So even if it got wet, it probably wouldn't damage it but I can't swear to that. It's not, it does not claim to be waterproof. Micro USB charging port. Now on the back of the unit, there is a little LED. And when you plug it in to charge it, it lights up white. I kept thinking it was gonna change colors when it was fully charged. I left it in for several hours and it never changed colors. They say it only takes about 80 minutes to fully charge this uh, before, you know, even from a completely dead battery but I never could see it change color, so I assume it just lets you know it's charging. But it was fully charged after about, I think I left it in four hours, and I didn't check to see how long it took to fully charge it. There's also a little small dimple on the back here, kind of an uh, sunken in place, and that's actually a button that does a couple of different things. If you press it, if you just tap it, it basically sends a ping to the app on your smartphone so that you can always find it. You always know where you are. Uh, for example, let's say you're on a road trip, you're in another city, you're not familiar with the destination or where, you, where your actual location is. You tap this and it will pop up on the map and show you exactly where you are. Kind of a cool feature. And then if you press and hold this down for like five seconds, it actually resets the unit, kind of clears out all the stuff that you've set, all your settings, unless you start over. One of the greatest things about this unit is how easy it is to set up. It really doesn't take hardly any time at all. You basically start out by fully charging the unit. Now, as I said earlier, it takes about 80 minutes to fully charge it. They do give you this little uh, USB, micro USB cable which I love the fact that it's small. I'm tired of these two foot long cables I have to keep up with. So I'll always know where this is and you know what it's for. And any micro USB cable would work, but I love the fact that they give you this little short one. The next thing you want to do is you want to install the Invoxia app. 
and you can install this on any Android or iPhone. So it's iOS or Android compatible. Now, after you've fully charged the unit, you want to launch the app. And I recommend that you unplug the unit from the USB cable before you go through the setup process. Once you launch the app, you go into settings. It's very simple. It's very uh, intuitive. You can give this tracker a name. I Mine was Goldwing. Uh, you can also put a picture on there because you could theoretically have multiple trackers for multiple vehicles or whatever you're trying to track. And you can manage all of those from the same app. Once you've launched the app, you go through the settings. It really takes less than about five minutes. It's probably the easiest app I've seen to set up as far as for a GPS tracker. And the only other thing left to do is just to place this on your motorcycle where you want it to reside. Now, on a touring bike, like a BMW or a Goldwing, you could put it in a saddlebag, you could put it in your glove box, it'll fit anywhere. Now, I've got the app open here on my smartphone, on my iPhone 12 Pro, and uh, of course you can see a map and it shows you basically anywhere you've been the current day. You can go back in time and see you know, how it's tracked you along or tracked the motorcycle's uh, uh, movement over any period of time. If we take a look at the app, you can see there's a map view that shows you everywhere the motorcycle has been for the selected period of time. Now, down on the lower left, you can actually see the name of the tracker, in this case Goldwing, and it shows you the remaining battery life, in this case 43%. The little gear icon allows you to access the settings for this tracker. And underneath the settings, you can see the drop-down menu that lets you select the period of time for which you want to see the activity. Now, if we click on this little drop-down menu, it lets you select a different period of time. I'm going to go back to the last three days, and that will let me see everywhere the motorcycle has been according to the GPS tracker for the last three days. This long blue line represents a road trip that I took to West Texas. And each of the little dots on the blue line are the GPS coordinates of when the tracker actually sent a ping to the server to record where I've been. It's a very, very well-designed app. It gets a lot of really good reviews, actually. And I would say from the GPS trackers I've tested so far, it is the best designed app I've seen so far. It's very, very simple to understand and to use. The battery life depends in part on how often you have the tracker send its position. And you can adjust this in the settings as you can see here. When the tracker is stationary, it only sends an update every 24 hours to save battery life. You can also put this in what's called standby mode. So let's say you're motorcycle is going to be in your garage for two or three weeks, you're not going to be riding the bike, you can put it in standby mode so that it's not updating every five to seven minutes. It doesn't really need to do that if it's not going to be getting ridden. If my motorcycle is in my garage, I'm not too worried about it getting stolen. So I would probably put it in standby mode. For example, if I were going to leave town for a couple of weeks, there's no reason to have this GPS unit constantly updating and just running down the battery. Now, what's nice is this not only tracks the location of your motorcycle, it also tracks any movement on the motorcycle. So let's say, for example, your motorcycle is in a parking lot, a parking garage, any movement at all on that motorcycle, and this thing's going to detect it. It's super, super sensitive, and it will send you an instant notification to let you know your motorcycle has moved, or let's say somebody uh, backed into the bike or knocked it over in a parking lot. You'd want to know that if you're in a hotel or maybe you're at a movie theater watching a movie and the bike's outside. This will let you know that instantly, so then you can go out and check on your bike. Another really cool feature of the app is what's called zone detection. Now, what this does is, let's say you've got certain places you leave your motorcycle for a period of time, and you'd like to know if it moves outside of that zone. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say I take my motorcycle to get the tires changed at Maxim Honda. I can set a zone around Maxim Honda and I can make it any distance I want, like a radius out from Maxim Honda. And once I've created that zone, if my motorcycle ever travels outside that zone, 
For example, are they out just taking a joy ride on my bike? Or are they taking it home at night? I kind of like to know that. Well, it lets you know if the motorcycle is outside that zone. As long as it's inside the zone, it won't alert you. But if it is outside that zone, you will get a notification on your app or on your smartphone to let you know that your motorcycle has moved beyond that zone. It's a very, very cool feature. I really like that. Now, where are you going to install this on your motorcycle? Well, pretty much anywhere. You can put it in any bag. You just want to keep it out of the rain. You could, on a gold wing, you could put it in your glove box, your saddle bag, your trunk, uh, side pocket, you know, just about anywhere. Same thing with a BMW, a Harley. When, you know, if you've got a bagger, you've got a saddle bag, you could put it anywhere. Uh, you could actually, if you're on a non-touring bike and you're worried about waterproof, you could throw it in a Ziploc bag and put it under your seat or put it on the frame somewhere. I'm sure if you haven't a Ziploc bag, it'd be fine. So I'm probably going to mount mine on the top of the left saddle bag. It'd be out of the way, very hidden, and I'm going to tell you why the left saddle bag here in just a second. If you have it connected to power, it can run indefinitely. So remember I said I'm thinking about mounting mine in the top of the left saddlebag. On the Honda Goldwing 2018 model, I actually have a USB connector on the left saddlebag, but it doesn't matter what kind of motorcycle you ride. If you have DC power going to a USB connector and you can keep this plugged in, like I'm going to do in my left saddlebag, it'll run forever. So I just plug it in. I'm going to Velcro it to the top of the left saddlebag, and it's done. I will put it on a switched circuit so that only when the motorcycle is turned on will it be charging. So therefore, I'd still use standby mode if I left for a couple of weeks. I don't like anything draining the batter, battery 24 hours a day. I know it's a very mild uh, trickle, but I just would not want to leave it on a non-switched circuit. So what does this thing cost? Well, I'm going to put links in the description down below to where you can purchase this through my Amazon store. Two ways you can buy this. You can buy it with a 12-month uh, subscription to the cellular service. So you don't have to mess with anything for 12 months. You can also buy it on a 24-month basis. And then after that, you can renew that on an annual basis. I think it's like $40 a year for the cell service if you choose that. Now, currently, 2021 in June, the cost is $129, and that includes your first year subscription. If you pay $159, you can get 24-month subscription. So you're basically getting that second year for about another $30 instead of $40. After that, you can pay the $40 a year, and that gives you the uh, cell service update. Every GPS tracker I've seen has this same kind of setup where there is some sort of subscription required. And this is actually the least expensive one I've seen. It's actually a very fair price, I think, for what you're getting. And consider this. You might actually get an insurance discount for having a GPS tracker on your motorcycle. You might want to check with your insurance company and see if they offer a discount for that. So if I were comparing this to the Monimoto, uh, let me tell you what I like about the Monimoto. I like the fact that it's waterproof. I like the fact that it is battery operated. I could replace the batteries. I never have to mess with recharging it. That's kind of an advantage. And I kind of like the little key fob mechanism, even though the key fob itself is a little bit bulky, yeah, a little bit mess messy to deal with. However, what are the advantage of the Invoxia? Well, it's even smaller, as you can see. It's just tiny, very thin, very lightweight. It's not waterproof, but that's not a big deal on a Goldwing or a touring bike. That's really not a, a concern. And I, I think there's ways you can mitigate that. So that's not a huge advantage for the Monimoto. But what I do like about this, I like the app better than I do the Monimoto. But here's the deal killer for the Monimoto right now. And I did not know this when I did my review of Monimoto. This is only 3G compatible. It doesn't work on 4G networks. And I've been told that 3G is going away in the United States very shortly, sometime this year. Now, I, in fairness to Monimoto, they have said that people who buy this 
uh, in January forward are going to get some ability to update to the 4G version when it's available, but I haven't heard when the 4G version of the Mani Moto is going to be available. The Invoxia, by comparison, is already 4G compatible, so it will work on the 4G networks. Very nice. That, that right there, right now, today, if I had to make the decision, I think I'd have to go with the Invoxia just for that, because in six months or a year, this may be outdated. I don't know for sure what their update policy is going to be. I've heard it's going to be generous if you bought the unit after January 1. And like I've said before, if I had known that before I did my review of the Monimoto, I would have told you that in the video. I just was completely unaware until one of you sent me a comment and told me that. You had researched it, I guess, and found that out. Then I contacted Monimoto and they told me about this update policy they're coming out with. But nothing specific, nothing I can actually report on. This one is future proof. I mean, it's basically ready to go right now, 4G, very lightweight, not waterproof, and I don't like the fact that you have to recharge it. But again, I can plug this thing in on my Goldwing, keep it charged up, not a big deal. And even if I didn't, you it's really not a big deal to take it out. It's so light, so small. If I were gonna keep it in my glove box, I could pop this thing out, you know, every couple of weeks, charge it for 80 minutes, not a huge deal. So anyway, this is the Invoxia GPS cellular tracker. And I look forward to your comments in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the links for the Invoxia on my Amazon page down below in the description of the video. And let me know what your thoughts are on the Invoxia GPS cellular tracker.